Hi, welcome back to the GSP and Charlotte video course. In this video, we will learn more about the architecture of a client and a server. So by the end of this video, we'll have a better idea of where we exactly use GSP and Charlotte. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Assume that there is a client and a server. The client sends a request to a server for an JPEG image. The server takes that request, process it and finds the appropriate resource in its hard drive and include that resource in an HTML web page and send it back to a client as a response. This is nothing but a static request where the resource will be there in the server and the server find that resource and include that in an HTML web page and send it back to a client as a response. But there are situations where the resource will not be there in the server and we have to generate that resource at runtime and send it back to a client. This is nothing but a dynamic request. Let's look at the dynamic request in detail. Assume that there is a client and a server and you are building a student tracking application and you want to display all the students in a web page. So you send a request to a server for list of students. The server takes the request, process it and finds the appropriate resource in its hard drive. If the server did not find any resource, then the server think this request as a dynamic request and send it to a web container. The web container takes that request and send it to a specific servlet. So what is a servlet? Servlet is nothing but a simple Java class, but it extends a special class called HTTP servlet. So inside the servlet, we will generate a resource. In this case, we will get the data from a database and the servlet write the data to a specific JSP and the JSP will be sent it to a server. So the server takes a JSP and send it back to a client as a response. So the JSP contains both HTML code as well as Java code. So in the client side, using a Java code, we will iterate over the list of students and display the student details in a web page. So the question is, how does the web container maps the URL to a specific servlet? This is with the help of web.xml, where we will configure which URL has to map to a which servlet. It's a developer responsibility to map each URL to a specific servlet. The web.xml contains two main tags, servlet, servlet mapping. The servlet tag contains two sub tags, which is a servlet name and a servlet class. The servlet mapping contains two main sub tags, which is a servlet name and a URL pattern. The web container searches the URL in a web.xml. If the URL matches with the help of servlet name, it will find the server servlet class and the control will be sent it to a specific servlet. So this is the high level overview of client and a server architecture. We will use servlet at a server side to control the flow and we will use JSP at client side for displaying the data. That's it for this video. In the next video, we will create our first web application. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, then hit a thumbs up and do subscribe to our YouTube channel for awesome video courses. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.